Hello everyone, my name is Pierre Saint-Michel. Uh, I'm the managing director of uh, Print France, a subsidiary of WorksVi. Uh, and it's a pleasure to be with you today. We will be presenting to you concrete use of the print cloud technology. Uh, and for this, I have the pleasure of having Matt Caffrey uh, from Asa Abloy, uh, one of our first customers uh, using the data sheet, uh, the print cloud technology, and he will explain to you how it is used within uh, Asa Abloy, and we can exchange. Don't hesitate to ask any questions you may have as we go uh, along. Hello, everyone. Uh, <laughs> thanks for uh, joining us today. Just a little bit about me. Um, three boys and a girl, so quite an active life. Um, uh, but also that wasn't enough for me, so I teach two football teams as well. Uh, so I have about 25 kids Wednesdays and Fridays every week, uh, coaching them how to play football. Some good, some bad. Um, but yeah, and I've been with Asra Abloy for just over four years now. Um, but previous to that, I've been in the IT industry um, about 15 years. And uh, just a little bit of a fact, I'm not sure if that's uh, something to shout about, but I could do a Rubik's Cube in less than 60 seconds. So. That's quite impressive. That's not yeah. bad at all. Yeah. 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 Uh, and so here we have a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> <That's too much. laughs> yeah. No, no, no. no. That, that'd be too much pressure. Um, but, but I do have one in my bag. So. 62 seconds is still enough. Yeah. Yeah, we'll give you 65 seconds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe later. Find me at the bar and uh, yeah, I'll, have, I'll have more confidence. Um, but yeah, I. Um, I think I was 29 and I said to my wife, I said, I really want to do a Rubik's Cube before I turn 30. And on the day before, I didn't need any of the algorithm. <laughs> and uh, that's too small. That's not that's a real one. one. Has to be standard, regular size. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But yeah, on the eve before my 30th birthday, I managed to do it successfully. So yeah, and now I just can't put it down. Um, so yeah, I live, live doing And it's them. funny because I have pretty much the same numbers. For about 60 years I've been trying to do the Rubik's Cube <laughs> without succeeding. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. Uh, uh, anyone in the room can do the Rubik's Cube? 90 seconds. 90 seconds. We'll have a, we'll have a Rubik's Cube off <laughs> later. Uh, yeah. So it's not oil enough. Uh, so <laughs> Ashrab Global Solutions, um, so we're a global company. You may not have heard of Asa Abloy, but you may know our brands. Um, so we've got over 120 brands worldwide, over 60 brands in the UK, and our business is always growing. Um, so just recently we've acquired two more new businesses, and one of them covers off fire seals. So these are sort of fire seals that expand when there's a fire to prevent smoke inhalation. Um, so looking at around opening access solutions, we do um, security code handle locks, Yale, you may have heard of for security, wireless access control. So actually my hotel, my key card to get into my hotel is an access key card. Uh, sadly, I look at every lock and door hinge and everything when I walk into a building <laughs> and Ashrab Loy uh, Icon is the cylinders that, that, that are on the building outside today. Um, it's a bad habit. I, I remember I was in uh, Disney World with the kids and uh, just looking up, waiting to see Mickey Mouse and just waiting, looking at the, it was a union branded door hinge and the wife's just like, shut up, <laughs> have a day off. Um, so yeah, quite a lot of brands. Um, chances are you've probably touched one of our brands today. Um, probably. So, you know, Astra Abloy, you may not know as a global company, but you've probably experienced one of our brands. Um, there was a little piece recently um, in the digital publishing report. Um, Stefan, he's here. I think he's doing a track tomorrow, 10 a.m., so might be worth joining that. Um, if he's sober enough or if we're sober enough. I don't know <laughs> how many beers we might have tonight. Um, but yeah, just a brief sort of report that sort of asked a few questions about what I do, what I've done in the industry. Um, how our partnership has evolved using Akinio for our PIM solution, and then how we've come to work with print as well. Um, but yeah, like I say, over 15 years in IT, um, 
we used to work with bespoke servers, custom building servers, um, sort of like solutions, trying to provide solutions for customers, what are their needs, and then it kind of ventured into software, analytics, um, and then you know we do business intelligence reporting as well within my role. Um, I think that's what I wanted to touch on. Okay, um, so my role within Astrabloy is how do we get to market? How do we expand our businesses, our brands? How do we uh, present ourselves online? Um, new technologies, mobile phone. During COVID, that was something that we developed. We developed an app um, to try and create a new way of working, a new way to get to our customers' fingertips. And as you can see there, the mobile app was launched in October 2020. And um, yeah, that's one of our routes to market. We have various websites, e-business websites, so union, so specifically brand oriented websites that our customers can get information from. And then we also have our e-business sort of uh, e-commerce platform where we encompass all of our brands for our customers to purchase products um, and gain information to our, to our products as well. And then we've got the sales reps that go out, do all the dirty work, feet on the street work, knocking on doors and you know just interrogating people. <laughs> so our product journey, um, so we have our ERP, which is AX, and we feed data into Akinio. So we have uh, Ziggy, if people are familiar with Akinio and the brand. And there's various ways that we're sort of sending data, receiving data, and it can be quite a minefield, as I'm sure everyone in this room knows that you know data can come from multiple sources. How do we how do we put it into a single source of truth? Um, and Akinio helps us do that. So Akinio for us is our single source of truth. Uh, uh, Matt, if, if I may, uh, when did you start? Uh, how did you get to Akinio? Number one, uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, how did you get to Akinio? Uh, before Akinio, how were you managing your product data, a and and uh, how much time did it uh, take you to choose Akinio? Uh, you probably looked at other uh, vendors. Uh, can you explain a little bit uh, the the story? How you got with uh, yeah. Akinio? Well. It's a good question, and you said, how did you manage? We didn't. <laughs> we did manage, um, you know, and COVID really accelerated our decision making. Um, the management of data, I guess, is in all of our minds. You know, we are the experts, product managers, um, sales reps, marketing. Everybody knows something about the products they're selling. Not necessarily collectively do we know the right information. Maybe 33% of the information is in someone's head, 33% on a piece of paper. Um, and that's how it was. We had Excel spreadsheets. We had backs of cigarette packets uh, written on the back of a napkin. Um, <laughs> and to try and collate that data was very challenging. Um, so just before I started, we did have Akinio 1.7. I think okay. from the time, from the yeah. dinosaur ages. Yes, I yes, think yes. before Ziggy was born, maybe. <laughs> um, and we we used it because we thought it's, we can get our products in there, but we didn't use it to the full. We just used it as a quick sort of plaster. How do we get our products out online? And then um, I went to Unlock, which is Akinio's uh, sort of partner event in Paris, 2020. March, yeah. Yeah. a week before lockdown. Mm, mm, mm. So we were there. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I sort of came back um, already with my mind set on Akinia. We had looked at other sort of vendors, Informatica, and um, they were probably one of the leaders that we were looking at. And actually, globally, we do use uh, multiple PIM systems. Um, so other regions, so France, uh, Sweden, Finland, they use different PIM systems. But in the UK, we use Akinio. And yeah, we, we accelerated that sort of decision to go with them and move to sort of version 4.0, I think it was at the time, um, during COVID, because we needed a new way of working and we needed to get our products out online really quickly. Um, 
so that's how that came about. And if I may, did you go immediately with the commercial version of uh, Akinio, or did you start with the community edition? Uh, straight into community, um, but also we upgraded to 5.0 straight away as okay. well. So we were on Ford and 5, and actually hoping by the end of this week we go on to Serenity, if, if anyone's familiar with that. They've yes. just launched 7.0. Right. That's their um, enterprise version. Yes. So that's not, not at all the same uh, price point, of course, as yeah. the community. But many customers have done that. We've seen this. We, yeah. we saw this again just last week. Uh, customers starting a project with the community and then moving on to Serenity. Yes. Yeah. What Serenity gives us is peace of mind, basically. Uh, we're always going to be on the latest version. Um, so patches and things like that will yeah. Um, you know, so hopefully, and it gives us a little bit more flexibility with some of the features that we do. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have any customization, so everything is done in-house. Um, so how we send data, how we collect data from our ERP is all done in-house by our solutions team. Um, and then we have the Dell Boomi team as well, which take the information via an API. Um, but again, we can do CSV. SFTP location drops and, and things like to gather the information. But it works seamlessly um, and it works live and that's how we feel that we have to be with our customers. Customers want information today. They want it yesterday. Um, and if we can work as quick as possible with live data, um, that helps us massively. Um, you know, it helps our customers work with us better. So yeah, at the moment we feed Various channels via IBM WebSphere, uh, Adobe AEM, and then we have the mobile app as well. Um, and then where print comes into it, so we have Akinio, we have data sent to print, but then we have data feeding back to Akinio and then out to everywhere else. So our mobile app, our websites, our web shop, and also um, shared catalogs at the top there. I don't know if you can see it. Um, that's a add-on solution with Akinio that gives our customers a read-only view of our products so we can select what we want to send to them. Um, we've just launched that and print is seamlessly integrated into it which is, which is fantastic um, for our data sheets. Uh, if, I, if I may, another question. How did you find out about print? Uh, what was your first contact with us uh, via Akinio, via our website? Yeah, it was, it was via Akinio. Um, so we spoke to our sort of channel manager and asked, um, what solutions do you provide? And there was a few. Um, we spoke to a few of them, and then you guys just stood out. Um, you know, you attracted our attention. and. I guess the relationship started from there, you know, um, the ease of working with you guys. Um, it's the same with Akini. I think you are an extension of our business. Um, and we found that those early, early conversations, those first few weeks, we found that we potentially found the right partner with you. Um, and I guess the rest is history now. But the relationship ongoing is that you are an extension of our business. Um, and for me, that's how I like to work. You know, I'm quite a small team, but you extend that, Akinio extend that, um, because our customers are the, the focal point. They're the driver. They're the reason why we're here. And as soon as our customers ask a question, we have to respond, and you are part of our team, and you respond, and you've helped us massively. So the support is why we, you know, we knew that we could support and work with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, one more question. Yes, that's fine. Uh, with shared catalogs, do you push your uh, data sheets, your PDF data sheets, yes. in shared catalogs? Yeah, yeah. So shared catalogs, uh, as I mentioned, is is a customer-facing um, catalog generation tool, basically. So our customers can log on, and actually, we use it internally for our sales team, our sales reps as well, for gaining price list. So anything that's stored within Akinio, images, data sheets, brochures dimensional drawings, and then technical information that we can enrich. We send it to uh, shared catalogs. Our customers log on, and they can see all the information. And they can actually choose to tailor what information they want to create, mm -hmm. so they can create their own catalogs. Mm. Um, so we have, let's say, 60 brands. They can filter on the brands that they want to generate a catalog of. And then what that does as well is it pulls off 
um, downloadable content such as images and data sheets that are created by print, mm. um, which for us is very powerful. Uh, we find it, you know, um, a fantastic tool, uh, and the fact that it's, you know, integrated with shared catalogs as well, it's, um, yeah, there's no additional work needed. Okay, yeah, so this is what one of the templates looks like. So it's all template driven, and what we suggested to print and the team uh, was that we want a template that looks like that. And these are data sheets that we already have. They may look and feel the same way, but we're doing them in a PDF creator, Word documents, or InDesign. So it could be that a marketing member is spending two hours, maybe more, on gathering the information to create one data sheet. Now, we created a template. It sits within Kineo, and these are the attributes that we've told it that we want to pull through. And it's quite responsive as well, because there's further attributes that are in the background of the Kineo that aren't enriched yet. But as soon as they become enriched, the data sheet refreshes, and the data sheet becomes a live data sheet. So that's the template. We have um, another one there for Asa Abloy. It looks and looks a little bit different. Um, so customers are used to seeing things in a different manner, trying to keep with the brand um, appearance, but whilst also sitting within Asa Abloy Global. And again, we could choose one of those templates and run it for the same product. Um, so when we select the service template, so we choose Union or Asa Abloy, start PDF creation, and then within I'd probably say a minute, maybe 30 seconds, a data sheet is generated. Um, what we also have within Akinio is a rule that any time somebody enriches an item, an attribute, it runs the, the data sheet again. It's automatically triggered? Yes, yeah, automatically triggered. So we could have um, some standards here. Yes. And as soon as the standards are updated, so standards are forever changing as well. So our, our window systems, the, the, the sort of the closing force of a door, the standards are always changing. And when we moved out of uh, the EU, our standards completely changed, you know, because we had to, so we changed these. The actual data sheet itself is future proof. It's the information that we put in it. Um, now you can imagine, someone having to revisit that two hours, maybe gathering the information, but this is 30 seconds. Um, so yeah, it runs every time a new piece of information hits that. And also what that means is most data sheets that are out there are probably 12 months old, 18 months old maybe. At best, these are probably two minutes old. On all our websites, on our mobile phone, when we access that data, it's live data. It may be time and date stamped from last week, but we know it's relevant, um, which for our customers is, is powerful. It enables them to sell better as well. Sorry? Yes? Just a second. Uh, you said um, about 30 seconds for generally the one pager. Yes. And uh, then you push this data sheet to the, to the cache for, for web services, or um, it, it, how do you handle that? So every, every 10 minutes, we send uh, to shared catalogs. So this will auto-generate every time something's enriched within Akinio. And then it depends on how you set your Akinio or, or, or within your PIM, how you set the timings. So via our API, it's live. So as soon as the data sheet is there, it's live. Typically, every 12 hours, we send new information to our websites via Adobe AEM. Um, but certainly through shared catalogs, it's every 10 minutes. So a customer could see, um, log on today, and then someone, a product manager, is working in the background enriching data. And then 10 minutes later, they have a new data sheet in front of them. How much uh, data sheets or how much uh, articles do you have? Uh, we have 2,600 data sheets. Um, and they and we actually ran them in one day when we went live, and I think it took two hours to just run all of those data sheets, and they were done. 
So every now and then we just maintain them. We just keep on top of them. And obviously as we're enriching data, um, and we are looking to add more templates as well. But at the moment, we've just gone live with these two. Does that help? Yes. Yep. Um, we only have one at the moment. But that's because we, because it's just for the UK market. Um, but I guess with Aquino, certainly, you know, with the uh, locales that we can have, we can have different languages. And that's something that is picked up. So again, you could have automation with how you've set that within. So it just looks at the attribute field. Um, and then if you wanted to trigger the rule to run in multiple languages, it could do that. So you could have the same data sheet five times, five different languages. Um, maybe a little bit more time on the resource, maybe five minutes to generate all five. But yeah, it certainly can be done. Yes? Um, do you ever have the issue that you need to update something that's only uh, to be published at a certain date? So that you have to maybe keep it in house? Um, <laughs> yes, we do, yeah. So um, the launch of a new product. So we could. We, not, a, not a change on a data sheet, for example. Um, we've not come up against that yet, no. But I'm sure that if we did, um, we would trigger a different rule. So we would set the rule to be a timed rule. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we, we do have uh, new product launches where we create the data sheet um, at the last minute. So, so that rule doesn't trigger until we say uh, after this date, and then it pushes it out to the websites. <coughs> Okay. So, uh, if I may, let me explain a little bit uh, what goes on and under the hood. Uh, one of the questions you asked, uh, indeed, you've heard maybe this morning uh, about the print cloud technology. This is brand new technology from Print Group. Uh, as the name says, it is cloud-based. We built a, a PDF generation engine, uh, which is highly powerful, highly scalable, that we can push any type of data uh, to the cloud service, uh, and it will process that data into one or multiple templates and generate a PDF as output, and that PDF will be sent back by the print cloud back to uh, the original uh, PIM source uh, of the data. So uh, a user in Aquino, and we started this with Aquino, uh, we've done this since with other PIM vendors. Uh, we can do this with any type of technology, uh, whether it's e-commerce, CMS, or what have you. Basically, uh, we built an API connection, a standard connector. Uh, our team built that. Uh, and from there, uh, we use, because in Aquino, we can cannot modify, we cannot uh, add a plugin, we cannot modify the UI of Akinio. We decided to use standard attributes, three or four attributes. One to trigger the start of the generation of a, a PDF, uh, another one to select, that would be the first one, I guess, to select the template that you want, uh, an action uh, uh, attribute to trigger the start, and then everything, all the data is pushed uh, to the print cloud uh, server. The data is processed, uh, a, a PDF is generated, and then we return uh, the PDF in Akinio, either in a regular attribute or into to the asset manager of uh, Akinio, whatever, it's config configurable. So it's all uh, uh, cloud-driven, yes? Um, I have a question. <clears throat> Where's the template, say, for the, for the data sheet? Because we heard this morning, I think, that you need uh, InDesign and making a template and then using the uh, Comet plugin to that's the way we prepare the templates yeah. today. That's going to be uh, changing. Uh, yeah. Dietmar and, and others may have mentioned this this yeah. morning. They are working on a front end, a uh, question from Matt as well, to allow customers down the road soon, I'm, we're hoping, yeah. to be able to generate their own uh, templates. Mm -hmm. Right now, we do start from a, a, an InDesign file. Mm -hmm. We've had customers that send us a Word file. Uh, uh, and, and so we create it, uh, we prepare what we call the placeholders, which will connect to the customer PIM and we fetch the data. But the template is saved uh, within the um, 
digital asset management of Akineo? No. Or do you store it within your... It's within our cloud, our okay. print cloud okay. ar architecture. Okay. So uh, we've built, we've developed already a user interface for that, mm -hmm. so customers will be able down the road to be upload. That's already existing. Maybe I was not in the presentation this morning, sorry, the German. So, <laughs> uh, 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 but there is already an interface built. Uh, so th it is the plan to allow partners first and then customers to be able to generate their own uh, templates, upload them, and then make them compatible with. Uh. So the technology is brand new, as we said. So there's a lot of things to be invented, to be written uh, from scratch. Uh, what we wanted was really to be ready uh, for the future, to be cloud uh, compatible, to be uh, really on the cloud, and to connect as many uh, PIM uh, solutions, uh, uh, partner solutions, and whatever uh, solutions to be able to generate. Right now, uh, we propose the first concrete uh, solution is the data sheet, because it's a natural. Uh, manufacturers, uh, uh, brands need to generate all day long, and uh, Matt was saying, uh, when they started, they generated 27, 100, 000, uh, 270, uh, 100 uh, uh, data sheets. We have customers in Italy uh, that generated 30,000. Uh, uh, you know, when they got started, and they just clicked the button, they have 30,000 products, and then. Our servers basically melt. No, we, they 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 are able to handle the traffic, and we generate the PDF and we push them back to to Akinio. So it, it's a very elegant, uh, very easy, and as Matt said, based on the content system, based on the PIM system, different rules can be built by the system admin to define when this is triggered. Is this triggered manually by a user? That's easy, simple. One click, save, done. Uh, or or is it business uh, rule driven, where uh, you know it's driven automatically, it's triggered automatically when data changes, and in the multi-language, that's even more uh, important. If you have product data uh, specifications that are changing uh, for you know the, the thickness of a product or whatever you uh, technical uh, information, well, the, the the data sheet exists in five different languages. You need to regenerate the five languages at the same time because that technical specification applies to, to the five languages. The language itself of the data doesn't change, but the spec changes. So it's essential to change all of them, not only one language. And so we have this. Uh, we're able to generate this. So we've done a lot of work to expand this data sheet service uh, with Akinio and with other PIM vendors. And it's, it's quite interesting as uh, the presentation of Matt allows us to, to see. Thank you. Pleasure. Yeah. Just a, do you use Akinio? Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, well, there is a like a snapshot in the reference entities as well, mm -hmm. so you can see within yeah. reference entities the the templates. Ah, okay. You don't have access to change anything with the templates, but you can but see you them. You can choose the templates. You yes. can choose the template. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, That's yeah. why I was wondering because you showed that you can select. <laughs> One template yes. one yep. that you need for union, for example. Yeah, exactly. So you just re yeah. reference it so, to a reference yeah, I entity. I wondered if this is uh, within the dump system of Akinio or if you store it within the print cloud. It, it's on the print cloud yeah. for performance uh, okay. reasons and everything. It's on so the it's print cloud. So it's just a reference entity yes. where you choose, okay, this one and then exactly. Yeah. Okay, this one. Yeah. Exactly. We use a yeah. reference yeah. entity. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have a customer in the US uh, who's asking uh, uh, Mike, I think, uh, for something like 30, 40 different templates mm -hmm. because huge brand and, you know, they want it's possible. I mean, you know, we try to make the templates uh, more uh, dynamic, more responsive. We can change a lot of things uh, dynamically on the template, the colors, the logos, you know, using reference entities uh, in Akinio. So we're able to do that. So it's better uh, to try to do this. We did this with a, a customer recently, Pilot, Pilot Pens. Uh, um, and uh, basically they generated uh, four different types of, of of, uh, of data sheets with one template. So uh, our team, our two guys here, uh, Yanis and Thomas, found a solution to uh, use only one template instead of creating four templates. So time saver, uh, uh, cost saving, and, and everything's dynamic in the content. For me or Pierre? For me. For <laughs> okay. you. Okay. Oh, I'm disappointed now. Uh, Timo. <laughs> 
we discussed the rest. Of okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what, what made you decide for print cloud instead of um, print suite on prem? Um, I just think in the speed of which we do things, I don't. Uh, well, working with Thomas, um, we just take the, the the lead of what these guys tell us. Basically, um, we've never seen any downtime um, or any sort of disadvantage to use what we are now. Um, we just take Thomas's uh, expertise and lead with what, <laughs> lead with that. Really, like I say, it's an extension of our business. That's dangerous, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For a long time. Not yet, but it is something that we're. We're looking to move over to, um, and then we would move to to print suite, yes. uh, uh, yeah. you know, and everything with print cloud always on. Uh, whenever data changes, which may be triggered by a user in Akinio, but could also be an import coming from from uh, the ERP or something, always on. Uh, uh, business rules in Akinio that will generate new data sheets maybe at midnight or three o'clock in the morning when data changes. Yeah. So uh, you know that way with uh, uh, the print cloud, that's the purpose of the print cloud. It's it's online. It's on the cloud. It's always on. Okay, While you're considering, when, as soon as you start creating product catalogs using Print Suite, yes, you will move the entire operation to the no. Print Suite. You would stay for, with the for the quality. data sheets. Yeah, we have a few customers like this. Why? Always on. <laughs> In the cloud. Uh, 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 yeah, well, depending on the print suite license, if it's a desktop, you need a designer to click the button to launch it. If it's an enterprise with an, uh, 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 an InDesign server, uh, then it will be always on. But uh, InDesign server can be slow, uh, generating 30,000 data sheets uh, going through an InDesign server will take how much time? A long time. <laughs> I don't have the answer. Uh, uh, it will take a long time. So uh, we have a couple of customers like this, a couple in the UK, uh, one or two in France. No, they are using the data sheet uh, service through uh, uh, the print cloud to generate data sheet. That's one uh, use case, extremely important use case. Generating catalogs? requires human intervention, uh, uh, more decisions about what goes on which page and what have you. So it's a different workflow within the company. Uh, so they use both. Yeah, and just to add, I think with data sheets is very much a Kineo driven. It's the template that's there for us to decide whether we want to run the information which we've put in. Um, but yeah, like you say, with catalogs, it's there's very much a human process to dot the I's, cross the T's, and make sure that the images align. Um, so the two yeah. scenarios work perfectly together yes. uh, in parallel. Two different use cases, two different uh, technology. Yeah. And one that we're exploring and not yet moved over to. So. And more print technology uh, with our customers. <laughs> what can be best, better than that? <laughs> <laughs> does, uh, does anybody use product models within Akinio, or do they use variants? Um, so that's something as well which we were worried about, um, but actually it works absolutely fine. So it takes the sort of parent information, and then you can generate the variant data sheet. Um, so taking the parent information, and then again, so 10, part of the product model, 10 different data sheets. Um, so that's something that we ran uh, back in January, um, and that works absolutely fine. I think we generated about 360 plus product models with about 2,000 products across them. So um, we didn't lose any functionality with the data sheet. So that's something that was really key for us. And then, yeah, just a little snapshot of what shared catalogs looks like. Um, so this is access to download images, um, a brochure, and then that's what the uh, print data sheet looks like as well. And then again, that's fed into our web shop, our websites, and our mobile app as well. So it's, uh, you know, we, we, we're really combating that customer need for information as quick as possible. Um, and print helps us do that. And then, yeah, there's a success story I think we did uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, download link to read that one in full if you'd like to take a picture. Um, just explains a little bit more about the journey that we did, um, some of the templates at the bottom. 
the middle one actually has quite a lot of information on there. That's yeah. one of our sort of highly enriched products. And again, that's triggered. Um, we have other rules in place where we trigger bronze, silver, and gold levels of enrichment. So uh, that middle one actually is a, is a gold level of enrichment um, because it, it ticks quite a lot of boxes in technical information that we have to have. Um, I'd probably say the one on the left is a, is a bronze. It has minimal information. It's got a picture. It doesn't have the dimensional drawings, but it has other information that's useful. Um, so again, you can have a rule within a Kenya that would suggest don't run it until it's silver. Don't run it until it has all of these attributes. Um, or if you need to get something out there, run it with a picture and a product title. Um, and we are looking to move on to other solutions as well. Um, other solutions that I'm sure have been spoken about. Um, we want to look at um, creations of labels as well. So that's something that we'll probably venture into next. Um, but yeah, so far, you know, I've always said I want to try and automate myself out of a job. Um, this kind of helped me do it because it's automated, it's future-proofed. Um, but I don't know if anyone's tried to automate themselves out of a job. It's impossible because um, yeah. you always have to try and manage and maintain what you've written, the codes that you've written, um, the scripts. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been a fun journey. Uh, and like I say, Thomas and the team as well uh, are an extension of our business. Um, and, and, and the same with the Kenya, really. Kenya are 10 years old, um, quite young, really, in terms of a, a solution provider. But my journey within Astra Abloy as well is young, and I want to go 100 miles an hour, and the, the team helped me do that, Akinia helped me do that. Um, so yeah, is there any more questions? Yes? I have a quick question, Jaime. Um, those screens, so they're quite far, the, those are screenshots of mobile pages, or is that the PDF? Oh, that's a, a screenshot of the PDF. A screenshot? Yeah, yeah. Do you find We've not tracked it via the mobile. Um, we do know that it's a good quality. So like when we download the link, it just opens up. Um, but yeah, it's something that we don't track at the moment. Um, the most traction we get via our websites is via Union Online. Uh, but that, that launched uh, November last year. So we're still waiting for the analytics on clicks and everything like that. But from the feedback that we get from the sales reps and everything, um, yeah, the, the, the link and it is is very useful. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, I think it yeah. is. Yeah, well, thank you Any very much. Questions? Yeah, question. Fred? Yes, just last one regarding your uh, usage of images or you have the list of manager inside. Uh, are you using your dynamic media for the images inside our screen or other system or just using from? So, yeah, we use Amazon S3. So we upload the images to there and we generate a URL. And the actual image is, is grabbed from that asset library. So our asset library, um, yeah, it's, it's based on a URL. Um, so we. The CDN of the on your Amazon things or it's cloud front or something? Yes, cloud, yeah, yeah. Um, but we can have physical images as well. So you can upload assets um, and then it works the same way. Is that correct, Thomas? Yeah. 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 So EM is just as a repository of assets for communication and marketing? Yes, yeah. So we have an asset library, um, main image, and then the attribute within uh, within Akinio, if I've got an image, I don't think. Um, yeah, so that attribute there is pulled from that asset library. So it's linked to the part code. Um, so we say that that part code is, is, is the name of the, so our naming convention is the name of the image is the name of the SKU and then it automatically pulls it across, um, and that's a URL. So that's... So as we are talking about print, and of course in print by using CMYK, uh, how, how do you manage the year from RGB to CMYK uh, transformation, conversion? I don't know that. I'll come back to you on that one. That's not something I don't think we deal with. We uh, generate the PDF using uh, an yes. iPhone profile. Uh, 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 so, uh, yeah. Now, uh, the images, we fetch them from Akinio the way they are. Uh, to be honest, I don't know either uh, exactly. Are these ever printed, though? 
Yes? They are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And pre quality is good as well. Like there's no sort of dilution of the image. Um, and as you can see with the dimensional drawing, um, that could be as big as the main image. That's the sort of space that we've tailored our template to be. Um, you could have multiple images on there as well, but we just decided to go with main image and, a, and, a, and dimensional drawings as well. So, but yeah, print, no loss of um, image quality via print when we print the data sheets as well. <coughs> and uh, actually, yes, yeah, so this, this uh, data sheet PDF, this is the code that's generated. So that code is unique to um, that template and that SKU. And there is actually a URL that's generated for that, um, which sends via the API. So if you did want to grab it, you can. Yeah. Yes? Um, is there, what's your most common use cases in terms of data sheets? Is it just external communication to customers? Is there an internal use for it? Internal, yeah, um, massively. So we've seen a massive increase of time saving through our CSD teams, our call center teams. So normally, uh, they get a phone call or request for some information and they're scrambling around and I guess this is the use of the PIM as well so we've int introduced that but certainly via shared catalogs they can quickly find that information customer needs maybe they can find it via brand via um, perhaps a certain quality of attributes so those types of finish and then those data sheets are there so they can actually just send that data sheet to the customer so they're sort of like we mentioned here customer facing self-serve um, this has enabled our customers to self-serve. We're empowering the customer, um, so it's saved times with calls coming into sales. Um, yeah, so it's it's yeah, massive time saving. Do you treat them as an ad hoc kind of like? I mean, not the right word to say, but throwaway thing. Like it's one off, and you take it for the time being, and then you get off it again. Or is there anything that you would do with it later on, like actually print it? or use it as a strategic asset for a campaign or something like that? Um, if we have a need for it, I think with brand new products, if we launch a new product, we'll probably run a, a few prints of the actual data sheets themselves, yeah. take them out with the sales reps. Um, but like I say, because the data is live, our product managers are constantly enriching the data. Um, so we don't have a need <coughs> to um, print and distribute that way. But certainly when we look to do the catalogs, um, we'll try and make sure that we have a high level of enrichment um, because that will be a single point in time. If we have to run a catalog today, it's only gonna be as good as the data that our product managers have put in. This time next year, it could look completely different. Same set of products, but a lot more enrichment. So I think with the data sheets ever evolving, that empowers our customers to get the latest information. So a product catalog printed once, printed today, but data sheets next week, next month, um, are as good as the product managers make it. All right, uh, no more questions? More questions? Yeah, well, thank you very much for your time. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, very thank, much. You. thank you, Matt. Yeah. yeah. If, uh, if there is any more questions, you can buy me a beer later. Um, <laughs>